All right, so when you come to Move Smart that organ, actually, I, I should first tell you, Chicago readers that and, and watchers, um, that this is the first press we're doing about our new site. So, uh, all right, I know, Yo Chicago exclusive, I guess. <laughs> so there are uh, two main sections of the site that I think most people would be interested in. So one are guides, and the second is the neighborhood finder. So to really quickly show you the guides, um, you've got a wide variety of step-by-step -step instructions on housing-related topics. So stuff for small landlords: how can you participate in the housing choice voucher program? Sexual harassment in housing, leases and subleases how to choose a reputable mover. Um, it's really intended to be a one-stop resource for all of the questions that someone might have about moving from one place to another. Um, they are categorized by topic and by keyword, um, and they're pretty easy to find. Um, the new part of the site, and what I'm most excited about, is the Neighborhood Finder. Um, so the Neighborhood Finder feature launched on Monday morning, uh, around 3 a.m., <laughs> and uh, we have since added uh, two new data sets to it. Oh, we're getting some funky stuff. As you may be able to tell, uh, this is an alpha version of the site. <laughs> um, so not everything is going to work completely right. Yeah. Um, so you're able to choose by choose a, a, make limited choices from a large list right now. You have banks and financial institutions, high density neighborhoods, low density neighborhoods, farmers markets, free and affordable health clinics and libraries. So let's say we'll choose uh, banks and high density neighborhoods. And uh, then click search. So you're then prompted to log in or create an account. Um, I'm going to quickly log in as myself. There we go. All right. All right. So let me go back to the neighborhood finder and choose those same two priorities and search. And then you get a list of zip code suggestions. Um, so you can see on the left, you get a big zip code. On the right, you get uh, how much of a match it is. And uh, as you would go through the results, you're going to get fewer and fewer houses. So five houses is the most match, and then it starts going down. All right. Uh, one of the things that we're going to be adding soon is in this middle column here, we'll give you bullet pointed information about what you checked off in that zip code. So I checked off banks, so it would show me how many banks are in that zip code. Uh, when you click on it, you get a map, and uh, we show you all of the data that's currently available in that area. So uh, you can get free and reduced cost health clinics, and it gives you the phone number. You could find out about the bank um, or get farmer's market information. And you can see here it's suggesting uh, Uptown for me, uh -huh. which has all of the amenities that I was looking for. We've also got, for the time being, for data sets that we don't have available, you can use a little Google Ajax search box. So if I spell grocery correctly, I will get grocery stores in this area. All right. And the results all pop up on the map. Uh, the other information that we currently have below the map is about housing and transportation budget. So this number is 43% of the test users' self-reported uh, household income annually. Um, and pretty soon, probably in a week and a half or so, um, we'll have commute information. So when you create a profile, we'll begin asking you to enter your work address. Um, and we will give you the commute time um, by your self-entered mode of transportation, so bicycle, walk, train, or drive, um, to whatever work address you have. So it's not going to be an exact, you know, this is my exact street, this is the route I'm going to take, but it'll mm -hmm. give you a sense from in this zip code, how long is it going to take me to get to where I work, or whatever address it is that you go to most frequently. All right. There's actually an About the Data page, so if you click on About and go to data on moosmart.org, we've got a list of everything, and actually links back to the source data if somebody wants to download it and play with it themselves. So uh, boundaries are drawn from Tiger Files, and diversity scores come from the 2000 census. Um, We'll be adding school location and quality, and that data is from the Illinois State Board of Education. Mm -hmm. Farmers markets come from the USDA. Um, the Center for Neighborhood Technology is giving us a nightly feed of iGo car sharing locations. All right. That'll be up pretty soon. Libraries comes from the Institute of Museum and Library Services. Um, public transportation we got from CTA's Pace and Metro. Um, and then we're going to have an additional layer that'll go with public transit from the Center for Neighborhood Technology that I'm really excited about. Um, financial institutions from the FDIC. Free and reduced cost health clinics from Leslie's List, which is just this uh, a doctor who got really frustrated that there was no resource and so built a database herself. Um, we have housing counseling centers from HUD. Um, we'll have the walk score actually that you'll be able to turn on for the zip codes that you're browsing. Right. Um, and then public art. Um, 
knowing where public spaces are in your neighborhood, I think, is a great way to help someone start to build civic pride. Um, and so people will be able to tell us, uh, people will be able to see what public art installations are in their neighborhood. All right. So one of the data sets that we're actually looking for folks' help on um, is a data set that doesn't really exist anywhere, um, and that is uh, community bulletin boards. Um, so if you think about it, getting to know what's happening in your new neighborhood is something you can do really easily if you know where the bulletin board is. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're thinking about moving to a neighborhood, it's a great resource for you to have. But there is no data set of bulletin boards hmm. that exists. Um, you know, we know they're usually in coffee shops in the back of a Jimmy John's, but past that, where do you go to find a bulletin board? So we actually have an iPhone application. Um, people can, if they go to download.vextra.org, um, they can download the iPhone application, navigate to Move Smart. So folks can take a picture of a bulletin board, enter a little bit of a description of where it is, like back of the coffee shop next to where you get a drink, um, and then your iPhone will automatically transmit a location to us. Um, and that data will start appearing on Move Smart as soon as we get enough of it. All right. All right. Um, the other thing we're asking folks to do is uh, tell us why you love your neighborhood. Um, take a picture of something, give us a couple sentences about what you love about your community. Um, don't use the name of your community, though, because we want to orient things by zip code. I, I was about to ask if, that, if yes. that was very intentional, that you wanted to get away from... It is intentional. So okay. folks have stereotypes about neighborhoods by name. Mm -hmm. They largely don't have stereotypes about zip codes. Yeah. And that's why we orient around zip codes. The other reason is that if you're going to go from our website to anywhere else and look for housing, you need a zip code to search by. Mm -hmm. um, as Yo Chicago well knows with its project of neighborhood boundaries, those are fluid and frequently moving. Right. Zip so, codes, uh, yeah. they might add new ones, but... Exactly. Yeah. A zip code is a zip code. Yeah. Um, and so we'll be, you know, as zip codes change, we'll be changing them, but uh, zip codes don't change that much. Yeah. So.